Hi everyone, it's Christine from Hollis Sands Create. It's Friday, April 3rd, and you've reached my floss tube number eight, uh, my channel about cross stitch. I uh, hope everyone is doing really well. I welcome you to my channel if this is the first time or if you're a, a return subscriber, I really appreciate that. I wanted to say thank you to <clears throat> all of the subscribers, commenters, likers, um, even the dislikers, if you you know didn't like the video, that's fine too. Um, but also just a, a kind um, thank you back to all of the well wishes um, and prayers that were sent my family's way. I really appreciate that. Um, having children who live in <clears throat> areas where, um, such as my oldest who lives in Northern Italy, um, where they're you know, in such hot spots for this virus has been um, fairly unnerving. But we're doing well, um, everyone is surviving. Uh, Brittany sent me a message this morning, said I really wish we were writing this out in, uh, in Texas. She goes, at least I could do laps around the yard um, or the pool, la la, she said. Um, though I told her, we've, it's been so chilly here in North Texas that the pool water is pretty cold. My husband said he stuck his foot in um, a couple of days ago and he was like, woo, he jumped right back out. So um, it is heated, but it's a 96,000 gallon pool because um, it has a 10 foot deep in the deep end. So um, it's a, a pretty penny to heat the whole thing. So, and for just he and I, we, we don't do that. So, but <clears throat> they're doing okay. Um, you know, can't leave. Um, their house other than one person um, at a time can go to the market and, and that is it and since she doesn't really drive uh, there in Italy that means Paolo is the only one who gets to go out so she hasn't been out for a while so I think she's getting just a little stir crazy because she's someone who's used to um, going out every afternoon and running she's a runner so this has been a little bit a little bit tough for that purpose, but health-wise, everyone is doing really well. So again, thank you so much. I, I just really appreciate it, and I've passed along to my kids the, you know, the support, and um, just so that they know that you know there's people besides family who are are praying for them as well. So thank you again. Um, I'm sure everybody's making some adjustments. We are. Uh, my husband's been working from home now for about three weeks. So if you hear him talking in the background, it's because he's over in the office uh, doing calls with all of his managers this morning. Um, everybody, you know, everybody is making adjustments, right? So the first week was um, a little bit tough because I'm used to having the run of the house. Um, and then he's home and you know, he's asking me, well, what time are you having lunch? And it's like, well, I eat whenever I want to eat. So <laughs> um, anyway, but we've we've adjusted and, and it's going pretty well. Um, <clears throat> there have been a couple of uh, bright spots. Um, I got gas for 89 cents a gallon the other day. That was pretty exciting. Um, the gas prices here in North Texas have dropped pretty good. I think the gas price was like originally, regular, regularly it was like, um, I don't know, $1.59, and then um, I had like a 70 cents per gallon credit from my Kroger card, so it brought it down to 89 cents, and I was like, woohoo. So that was kind of exciting. Um, and then the other thing that has been a real bright spot is the last two Tuesdays, there have been a group of stitchers, and I believe everyone has a, a floss tube channel in, in our group as well, who, <clears throat> through the use of Zoom, we have been doing a virtual stitching group um, and we all log in at, at the appointed time and um, with Zoom you can do gallery view so you can actually hit that and see everybody who's logged in and uh, this last Tuesday I think we started at like 730 and it was like 1030 I think before anybody dropped off it was just so nice to um, sit and stitch and gab and talk and then we um, we stole an idea from uh, Brenda and the serial, the serial starter about bringing to the group um, a chart that would be our desert island stitching. So that was kind of cool and everybody showed, you know, what they would take to the desert island with them and explained why and, and, and it was really neat. So um, I really, um, that's a bright spot. I'm really looking forward to that um, on a recurring basis. Um, and you know, we, as some people maybe can't make it, we've had other people who joined and, and so it was, it was really fun. It was really nice. 
Um, I did have a question from this last, uh, this last video. Um, Linda Pierce asked about storing fabric in plastic. Um, she had commented that she read that you shouldn't do that, and so she asked what you know my opinion on that was. Um, back in the day, back when I was you know buying fabrics originally, it was mostly Ada, and and then kind of went into some even weaves. And it seemed like we always stored them in, in plastic. It was sold in plastic. You just kept it in the plastic, you know, unopened and tossed it into your stash until you're ready to use it. Now with linens and things like that, especially the over uh, the the coffee dye, the, you know, the natural um, natural colors and tints and things that we can use, um, the recommendation is to not store in plastic. And I did a little bit of reading, and I found a very interesting. Um, information article from the Smithsonian on um, storing your antique slash fairly heirloom linens. Um, and they referred to several different kinds of linens and they did mention samplers and, and things like that. So you can assume that that would probably be all stitched pieces. Of course, they talked about um, acid-free, <clears throat> making sure that you're not using tissue paper and things like that that are not acid-free specifically. They really suggest that uh, linen be kept um, in an environment that is clean, dry, but gets air. The thing with plastic is if you put it in and you zip it closed to say keep dust and things like that out, you're also potentially trapping moisture. And one of the other things is when they say cool, dry environment, they also mean an environment that does not have a temperature swing. So in other words, no attic, no basement, you know, things like that where they heat up in the summer, they get cold in the winter because that causes condensation and, you know, um, problems with that. So if you're going to use plastic, what they suggest is um, a white cloth. You put your linens in that first and then you can put plastic loosely over that but not sealed um, to keep you know any kind of dust or, or anything like that out the other thing that they recommend is for your linens and this could be just even your stash linens you know how that comes usually folded um, they tell you to take it out every so often open it up refold if you're going to have to fold but fold in different fold lines because what happens is when it's been folded like that for so long it ends up breaking down the fibers along the fold line and that's where you end up with weaknesses and tears. So it's just really interesting and if you want to go on and read all of the information, um, it's just the it's Smithsonian Institute um, website and you can type in, you know, like storing your overdyed linens or store, I typed in storing antique linens um, and, and it was really very interesting to, to read. So, but thank you Linda for, for that question. I, I appreciate that and it's probably something that we've all um, thought about it different times. So, um, moving on, um, I'm going to start with um, a little bit of what's hanging and kind of also um, my collector's haul. Um, I didn't have much in the way of regular haul, uh, definitely no, no patterns this time um, because obviously we've just had all the market stuff. Um, I did order in um, a little bit of fabric um, because I actually belong to the Victorian Motto um, Sampler uh, Fabric Club. And so I did get in some fabric from Nancy, which was just beautiful. So then I emailed her and actually ordered more of that. Um, so that was, that was kind of nice. Um, but what I did get, which I really do love, is I got another really nice almost baseball size pin cushion all in velvet isn't that pretty and it came with the old and these are old pins this was from an estate sale so that came this week i was really excited about that and along with it see this itsy bitsy tiny little basket pin cushion with green velvet now, it probably looks bigger to you than it actually is, but this is actually only about an inch, inch and a quarter wide by an inch tall. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I love that. And the lady was so nice that when she, she sent those, she included these pins. 
these four pins, and these are glass topped pins. I don't know, there we go. Glass topped pins. With a little note just saying she included these um, and hoped that I could use them in my collection, and I definitely can. So I was very excited about that. Um, and in just a second when I show you one of my finishes, I'm so happy about the pins because I'm gonna be using those pins in one of my finishes when I get to the point where I can FFO it. So that was kind of it as far as my, you know, my collector's haul. Um, so I'm just gonna move right along because I don't wanna uh, run this video super long today. Um, I've got a lot of things that I need to get to, but I wanted to make sure I kind of stick with my, my every other Friday <clears throat> uh, video if possible. So we'll go right into what's hanging. So um, I've, as you can tell, I've switched decor back here. Um, all the St. Patty's stuff has, has gone back to its home for the next 11 months. And all the Easter spring has, has come out. Um, so with that, of course, I change, you know, a lot of my, the, the, the stitching decor as well. So the first thing that I have, um, and again, this has been stitched for an awful long time. This is from Lizzie Kate. This is the, the Easter sampler. Uh, let's see if you can kind of see that. It's really sweet. And I just have it in this frame that I just framed myself. This was, I don't know, like even, I don't even remember where I got it. I've probably had this hanging for 10 years. A long time. So anyway, so there's Easter Sampler. Uh, let's see where I can put some of these things. Um, this is... All Chicks Welcome from Shepherd's Bush. There we go. Shepherd's Bush. It was just a quick little stitch. I really like that one. And then from Waxing Moon Designs. Is it spring yet? That sweet little bunny. And again, just a bit of framed framed myself. I've gotten much better at it now as I'm pulling out some of these older uh, pieces to, um, you know, bring out. I'm looking at the finishing and going, oh man, I need to redo some of this stuff. But um, I just haven't had the time nor the the uh, the real want to, to to actually do it. So, now this one is probably my favorite spring piece. This is B is for Bunny from La Di Da. And this, this is actually um, still available. Isn't that lovely? It is just so cool. And this bunny, I just, I really love, I love him. I love that folk arty, antique -y style. It's just really neat. So again, um, stitched this one. And I believe I finished it. I finished it two years ago, I believe. It's 20, so 2018 is when I, when I stitched and finished this one. And just, um, I just bought an open frame from Hobby Lobby and, and stretched it and, and framed it myself. And then the last one I'll show you is from Rosewood Manor. And this is framed, and I had this one professionally framed um, with museum glass and everything. And this is Dreaming of Tulips. And I actually changed the tulips, all of, uh, all, on the original pattern, everything is done in these colors, these reds. And let's see, this one. So I left a couple of them that were the called for, but I just went through um, and it's all done with classic color works threads. And I picked out some of just what I love for um, tulips because I'm a big tulip grower. Not so much now that we've moved to Texas because it, it's just not real conducive to growing tulips down here. But um, the tulip beds that I've had in, in previous places that we've, that we've lived in, um, these were just some of the colors that I absolutely loved. And so I went through and just picked out some really yummy colors and changed um, the motifs, the different tulips into different colors. And I really, really love this. And this hangs up 
all year round. Um, what I do do is I pull it off of the big wall in the hallway where it hangs and um, I move it into, I've got a, a small, like shorter wall that um, I will hang a seasonal piece, you know, each month. And so what I'll do is take it off of the big wall and move it into that kind of place of honor, if you will, and, um, and then move something else, you know, around. So there is a bit of a hole on my wall, on my big wall for, you know, for that month, but um, I just love it so much and it's a big piece and I, I don't really want to store it. I want it to be out all the time. So that's kind of what's, what's hanging. And um, we'll move right along to, um, well, I don't have any FFOs. I just flat did not have time. Um, the orders have kept coming. We went right from market frenzy <clears throat> into quarantining frenzy. Um, people are buying thread and, and uh, fabric um, more so than the patterns, um, like they're buying toilet paper. It has been kind of crazy. So I've never cut so much fabric in my life, but it's okay. It's a good problem to have, and I'm and I'm thrilled that people are stitching. Um, that's that's just great. But it hasn't left me a tremendous amount of time to do um, FFOing. I'm grabbing, managing to grab a few minutes at the end of the night, um, just just doing some stitching um, and trying to relax a little bit. So I do have three finishes to show you. Last uh, video, I showed that I was working on Love One Another by Plum Street, and I got it finished. I really like this. And this is another one that I think I'm gonna frame. And I had bought an open frame because I thought that the, the wood color on it looked really nice, and it does, except it's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than I would like. So I'm gonna have to, well, once the store's open, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, all of them are closed, but once things are kind of reopening, I'm gonna have to go back out and see if I can find um, a frame with the same wood tone color um, that's maybe a little bit smaller size because I really don't feel like I want to um, add in maybe, you know, I don't want to use a mat and I don't want to put in fabric or something like that to, to fill that space. I just really want it to be about the, the, the stitch design. So I'll have to kind of work on that one. But So that was a finish, so I was happy about that. Um, and then the next two finishes were also new starts. Um, I, I guess sending out so much stuff, you know, as you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I want to stitch that, I want to stitch that. And then I just, I looked through my whip pile and I was like, I don't feel the desire to stitch any of these. I just want to start all the new things. So I did pick a couple of new starts. And let me put something behind this. Let's see a little better. Um, so this one is I Collect from Brenda Gervais for With Thy Needle and Thread. And you know, obviously, I collect. So now you can kind of see these little pins, these glass topped pins. What I'm gonna do is um, I actually have some antique, at, antique style ticking that I'm gonna turn this into a pillow um, that I have for the backing and I just pulled some um, rickrack that I'm gonna use on the edge and then I'll put these pins in. Um, and then these buttons were some um, this one's an antique button that was out of my grandma's button collection. Um, these two were from my husband's mother's um, button collection. They both passed. And so I was going to even add a couple more, but I got those three on. I thought, you know what, that's it. Uh, that's plenty. It looks, it looks just fine. So this was fun and quick. I did it in just a couple of nights. Um, and it just goes so perfectly, so it, it'll get finished as a pillow and then put in with my my collection. The other finish that I have that I actually finished last night, um, this was a new start and a finish, and it's the wonderful Easter Parade from Blackbird Designs. And I did the basket. Now I changed it up just a tad in here. You'll see 
there are supposed to be flowers. Well, I didn't want flowers on top of my eggs because in my Easter baskets, I don't put flowers. But I do like the viney stuff because that kind of just looks look, makes it springy. And it also kind of looks a little bit, you can see how there's like the little grass that you would normally have in with your eggs on top. So I just kept with that, but I didn't put in those, those three uh, flower blooms. I just liked it the way it is. So finished that last night and I, and it's, I did this on 32 count cream Graziano. Um, this fabric came as part of a, a mystery sal that I was going to do a couple of years ago that was from Heaven and Earth Designs. And as you know, Heaven and Earth Designs are typically full coverage. Well, I got part of the way into it and as I started to see the reveal, I didn't really like the design. <laughs> it sounds kind of bad. And then I thought, you know what? This thing is huge. I don't really like it. I did pay for it, but I'm not gonna stitch it. So I kind of cut my losses, cut off the square um, from where I had done the start on the corner and salvaged the fabric. And it's kind of, it's not stiff, but it definitely holds its own. It doesn't, it doesn't flop when you hold it. I mean, it's, it's fairly, fairly sturdy. Whereas something like one of these from R&R just is very, very floppy. Um, so I kind of, I kind of like that. And I think that to show those pastel colors, you need something like that. So I will be now starting, I'm going to start the, the bunny. Um, and I'm going to have these framed together um, uh, with the bunny kind of standing over and looking over the basket, I think is how I'm going to do it. So um, I'll talk to my, my lady um, at the frame shop and, you know, we'll come up with a plan. So I'm, I'm launching right into Easter Parade the bunny next. So, so anyway, so that was my, my finishes. Um, and since I was talking about launching right into Easter Parade Bunny, um, I will talk about um, my whips. Um, I've been on a bit of a kitting frenzy. And sometimes when you don't do a bunch of new starts, it's just fun maybe to just kit things. So I kind of was like, all right, well, what am I going to do for my April lineup? <clears throat> and so I looked at all the things that I had kitted, which was one day this last week. I don't know, I was just in there digging in fabric and next thing you know, I'm pulling out stuff and I had some empty project bags and I was pulling out threads and I just it just felt good to, to, to join and match things. So I'll just kind of show you what I kitted up um, and then I'll pick some things from what, I've, what I have here um, for my April lineup and then I'll report on those in, in a couple of weeks. But the, one of the things that I, that I kitted was um, a Quaker Welcome, which I did show you this as one of my favorites last time when we spoke, um, or when I talked to you. And um, from Lila Studio, Quaker Welcome. And I have everything all pulled together. Um, it's mostly the called for colors, um, but not 100%. Um, I did use one of my project cards um, I'm doing it on 40 count vintage light exemplar. So that should be very fun. I'm kind of excited to, to start that. And I'll just, just see when, when I, if I end up pulling it out for, you know, for the April lineup or if I choose something else. <clears throat> um, but this will get started pretty soon. Another one that I kitted that I've had in my stash for, for quite some time is Lottie Dawes fractor flowers. This is another one that I just love. I think that Lori's designs are so clever and when I was in her room at market, I just wanted to stay there. Uh, you just look at all of the stitchy goodness and the models are just so beautiful and her style just seems to fit my style um, or what I like really well. So anyway, so I got that one um, all kit it up and there's there's my my threads and my fabric I'm doing that one on 36 count Wren by DTP so I've got that one ready to go then this one <clears throat> the next one that I have that I kitted 
that I pulled for consideration for April is an old one. I bought this back when we lived in Pennsylvania, I want to say in maybe 2000, that's, yeah, it's 2008, I think, Blackbird Designs 2008. This is a Loose Feathers Where My Heart Blooms. And I really wish that I would have purchased more of these Loose Feathers patterns back then. Um, at that time, it seemed like I stitched a, more just seasonal things rather than just general subject types of things. And I was just kind of starting to to look at things like this and, and kind of like gravitate towards them a little bit more. But this one I did buy. Um, and I'm actually really glad that I did because I paid $9 for it at the time in the shop there in, in uh, outside of Reading, Pennsylvania, which unfortunately they just retired. It was stitch and stuff. But um, I have actually seen this one on eBay for as much as 90 to uh, 95 to $100. So i um, really glad to have that. So that one I have kitted, newly kitted. Um, and then the last one that I pulled out that is newly kitted um, is from the new sewing club. And by the way, um, I want to address the smell. I know I've heard a couple other floss tubers who are shop owners also talk about the smell of the books. All of the books, not just this one, from Blackbird, they share at market, had a bit of a odor, if you will. Um, it's from the printing. It's it's clearly, you know, like an ink smell or, or something, and it is strong at first, but I kept one of these for myself, um, so that would have been purchased like, what, March 7th or 8th, um, and I've left it out, and every so often I open it to a different page to air it out, and now I have it in a project bag, and I pulled it out before I started to, you know, to film this. Um, and there's a tiny bit of a, of a smell, but for the most part, it, that smell has dissipated. So if it's really strong, I had um, a person who emailed me who was very upset because they thought it was some kind of musty, uh, mildewy smell, like maybe I had l let it get wet or something, um, but it's not. It's just from the, the printing. It will dissipate, it will go away. Um, so anyway. I have picked from this book, I'm gonna be careful here how I'm doing this, and kitted up Willing Hands. And I believe it's on the front, it'll be easier to show you from the front, Willing Hands. I really, really like the colors in this one. It says she works with Willing Hands in Delight. And I guess we know I have a thing for hands, right? Hollis Hands Create creative hands. Thank you God for hands. Anyway, so I have that one kitted up and that will be one for consideration um, for April as well. So I had to pull something out of that book. I really like this book. <clears throat> and then I have two things that were, um, one is a mania start, um, birds of a feather, the bitter Bitter Flower Sampler. Don't you love that flower? I really love this flower. And that basket is so cool. It's so cute, so cute. That's what I'm supposed to say, it's so cute. It says, the bee sucks honey out of the bitterest flower. And this is an oldie too. This is um, 2002 maybe, I think, something like that. I've had this in my stash for an awful long time. So that one I started during Mania. And this is the, the start that I have on it. So I feel like it's, a, it's actually a decent start. Um, so I, I will definitely, this one will definitely be part of my April uh, lineup. Um, so I wanna, I wanna keep, going, keep going on that. I can't wait to get up that vine and get to that flower. So I really, really am excited about it. It's, it's funny, isn't it, how you, you're drawn to maybe a specific motif or something about a, a design and 
you almost want to like just stitch over to that whatever that design is if it's not doesn't happen to be in the middle or it doesn't happen to be on the corner or something where you're starting it's like okay I'm like, like a mad person I want to just get to that because I really want to stitch that the trick then is once you've stitched that thing that you really wanted to stitch is to make sure you stay interested enough to continue the rest and finish it so speaking of <clears throat> a middle start and wanting to stitch that thing that you really love Here's another one that I have. Now this one was an October 1st start and it's a sal with um, Michelle from Bendy Stitchy and Laurie from Mischievous Stitches. And it's Marianne Bournes. Love this, Miss Marianne Bournes. This is an oldie, 1791. But look at that B skip. I absolutely love that. Now, I tend to be a middle starter. Uh, that's how I learned back in the 80s when I started stitching, that you you know you folded your fabric um, in the four quadrants so that you get the center point, and that's where you started. Match it up, that's why you have arrows on your graphs to show you where the middle is. Um, so, this one just was right up my alley because I wanted to stitch that B skip. And this is where I am. Love, love, love it. It's a lot of solid stitching, um, but I think once I finish that that piece, then, you know, that's gonna be, it's gonna be so fantastic. You know, and really, if you wanted to, I won't, but you could just pull that out and just, wouldn't that make even just a lovely picture just like that, those flowers? There's so many components that you could pull out or if you wanted to, you could just stitch, you know, from here up if you didn't want to do all this solid stitching down here. That's the lovely thing about samplers and motifs and, you know, things like that is you can just do whatever you want. You stitch what you want because that's what makes you happy. That's really cool. Love it. So, that's that kind of shows you what I had kitted up. Um and what I'm considering for my April lineup. So let's see, on through that, on through that. Okay, so I've got a couple other things that I wanted to show you. Um, not new collection haul, but if you'll remember last video, or if you're new, one of the things that I showed in our last video um, as one of my favorites um, was Again, la -dee da two rabbit sampler. And I talked about the fact that I absolutely love those standing up rabbits. They're really cool. Well, when I was pulling out my April decorations for Easter and spring, I said, I mentioned that I have a stand up rabbit and here he is. Look at the chicken on the back of the egg with that hat and this little rooster thing is sticking through the top of the hat. And then this little basket comes off and look at the eggs, a little bit of grass. And he just, had, just hangs on his arm. But the detail of this is just extraordinary. And I have had this guy for a long time, really long time. And so he's one of my prized Easter um, possessions, decorations. But now you can see why I really liked this two rabbit sampler. So the two rabbit sampler is gonna have to get kitted up and, and um, put into the pile to be able to grab when I'm ready to, to need something else to stitch, so. And then one other thing that is a, a, a collector's item that I have is, um, I think I've mentioned before that I, I collect a lot of things from the 50s and 60s. Um, um, cold paint, ceramic types of, of figurines, um, uh, spaghetti ware, you know, things like that that were really prominent and very popular back in that time frame. And one of the things that I have is that comes out um, are what they call calendar cuties, and they're from NAPCO, um, which 
um, it, it can be marked NAPCO, NAPCO Ware. Um, it's basically the National Pottery Company, NAPCO. And in 1962, they put out, starting in January, and I should have started this back in January to show you the January uh, calendar cutie, but I'll show you March, because I was getting ready to put it away. These were all made in Japan back in that, at that time. And this is March's calendar cutie. You know what, let me block out the things that are behind. Isn't she sweet? And look at her little dog, he's got a pipe in his mouth. Can you see the pipe? Isn't he cute? So that's getting ready to be put away and I just got out April's little baby with her Easter bonnet and her basket of eggs and the little bunny. But each one of these little babies just have the little ruffled diaper covers and they just have the sweetest faces. So this is April. So I just thought I would share um, a couple of those since I happen to mention my girls. Um, I have several collections of uh, lady figurines or baby figurines girls um, but that one is one that one one comes out each month um, with all of the rest of the decorations so I thought I would share that so okay moving on um, let's see I did a giveaway and real oh, quickly let me see Oh, hang on just one second because I actually left my winners over on the other table, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> so, I had two patterns that were from Silver Creek Samplers from this year's release this year at Market. Um, easy decaying. Really clever, cute design. And Moonshine. So we had uh, 36 comments and the winner of Izzy Decayen is Karen Kennard, K-I-N-A-R-D, Karen Kennard. And the winner of Moonshine is Doreen Deskins, D-E-S-K-I-N-S. -E I, I will comment <clears throat> on each of your comments. I'll have my email address um, below in the comments so that you can, or in the description box, so you can email me with your mailing address and I'll mail these right out to you ladies. So thank you so much for everyone who um, did comment and who uh, showed some interest in, in receiving, you know, one of those patterns. So um, they're really, really sweet. Okay, so on to the giveaway for this video. I want to real quickly talk about the bright lights, the things that are positives in what's happening right now in our world. One of them is from Just Another Button Company, which most people are familiar with, Jabco, everybody calls Jabco. Um, the creator of <clears throat> buttons and pins and pin minis and things like that that embellish or adorn um, a lot of our projects. They have put out a really cute kit, and um, it's called Stand By Your Peeps, and it's presented as cross-stitch by Just Another Button Company um, as a gift with the purchase of the button packed, back pack. There's a chart, but also on their website, they have a free wool applique pattern using the same buttons, and you can go on and you can just download from their website, and I, it is adorable. Um, anyway, stand by your peeps. Uses all DMC and then these buttons. Ah, and the, every one of those buttons is turned the wrong way. The buttons have those letters. There's an E. So, and then there's a tiny little carrot 
little carrot button that the purple bunny is getting to hold, standing in the middle of the chicks. So they have very graciously <clears throat> made these available to all the shops um, for a ridiculously um, small price and um, for us to be able to, to sell. And they sent it to us for free shipping and things like that, which was really nice. But I thought, you know, it would be really nice then for me to pass that along to uh, hopefully one of my viewers who would really love to, to stitch this. Um, it's just really nice. Um, there's been, there've been a, a few, and I'll talk about a, another um, opportunity to, to have a chart that was uh, from a designer, again, in just a little bit in the shop news. But <clears throat> for right now, um, if you would, talk about what you can see is a bright light or a positive that's happening in your world. Um, I think if we look around, um, and maybe sometimes it's just the fact you have a roof over your head, um, <clears throat> there are some positives if we take the time to, to stop and to, to think about it and to look at them, um, even in times when it, it's, it's really tough. So um, just mention you know, what your bright light is. Um, I had mentioned that I had two things, a gas for 89 cents and um, my virtual stitching group. I love those. I think that they are the bright lights that I look forward to, uh, that stitching group. 89 cents a gallon, that might not happen again, but um, it was a bright light for that week, which was kind of cool. So just mention what your bright light is. Follow all your rules. Um, you know, don't say give away, um, please be at least 18 or have your parents permission. That's kind of all the, all the rules of the giveaways and, um, I'll send out Stan your peep to, to one lucky winner. So, and then uh, last stitchy new, stitchy stuff kind of thing I want to mention. Um, I mentioned last week, um, and a lot of you responded, um, berry bowl. We do have the berry bowl, so going to be starting here pretty soon. Um, you've got a couple of weeks to gather your supplies if you want to join us. Um, my friend Kristen, from who's Blue Bonnets and Whiskey on here, um, she and I are hosting um, the berry bowl sampler sow, and it'll just be called hashtag berry bowl sow. Um, we'd love to have um, as many of you who would love to stitch as possible. Um, I have had quite a few people message me and I'm just loving the creativity. I happen to love fall type colors. So these colors and they match everything in my house. So I'm going with the called for colors. I have one lady who just ordered all different kinds of berry colors. She's like, they're berry bowls. I'm going to make them more berry. And the colors she picked out were absolutely gorgeous. Um, some people are stitching this on the two pieces of fabric we're going to join them and they're doing it with a partner some people are just picking out one large piece of fabric and just going to stitch the whole thing themselves it's it's so cool to see everybody's you know creativity and their different ideas and so if you'd love to join in on that we'd love to have you so um be sure to you know to message if you you know want to know exactly i think may 1st is when we're going to start um and uh, we'll you know we'd love to have you anyway so, last thing, I do have a little bit of shop news, so if you don't want to hear about any of that, that's fine, and uh, I hope that uh, your next couple of weeks are just fantastic, and everyone stays extremely well and healthy and safe, and practice all your social distancing rules um, and things like that. If you are trapped at home, that you are able to, um, you know, get some assistance, some deliveries, things like that, at least in... Um, and uh, you know, no problems. So, thank you. Um, on to shop some shop news. Um, I have an Etsy shop, Hollis Hands Create, and we've got just a couple of quick things I wanted to, to tell you guys about. Blackbird Designs um, came out with Sweet Land of Liberty a couple of years ago. Um, it's got five designs, it's a patriotic book, um, absolutely lovely designs. Um, Anyway, they have re-released it or reprinted it. Let's put it that way. I don't know that it really went out of print. It just became very hard to find um, um, for whatever reason. I don't know if as soon as it would get to the distributors, it was immediately sold out. Um, there for a while, I didn't even see it on the distributors list. 
So that has been reprinted, a new printing um, coming out. Um, I've already had people messaging me and um, I do have quite a few copies um, on the way. The first ones um, should hit the shop probably Monday, um, Tuesday at the latest, I hope. Um, so that's kind of exciting and I will try to include a picture at the end here. Um, one of the other things that we'll be shipping with all of our regular orders um, is, a, is a gift from Country Cottage Needleworks, um, Nikki and Diane from Little House Needleworks. They collaborated to do um, two designs um, called Where There Is Life. And they are donating the design, Hoffman Distributing is donating the printing, and each shop who places their order uh, for a, a limited time will receive 10 copies of this to be able to sell um, you know in their in their shop and this is a fantastic uh, again coming together of, of the stitching community um, you know like the stand by your peeps to help those shops that have had to close um, I know here um, in Arlington which it's about an hour well for me to get to Arlington if it had absolutely no traffic, which may be on some days today, there would be no traffic, it would still take me almost an hour to get there. Um, but with traffic, you're look, looking at at least an hour and a half, even sometimes a little longer. Um, so I don't go there very often. But they were still um, getting out market orders, still going to the shop each day. Even though they weren't open, they were still getting things out, and you could email them. Well, now they can't even do that because of the shelter-in-place order that we're under here in North Texas. Um, so, you know, as a small business, they still have rent to pay, they still have utilities, um, you know, they have inventory to pay for, and things like that, and, and I'm sure they're not alone. I'm sure there's a lot of shops who are probably in that same boat. Um, I'm very blessed that I'm able to, to work from home. Um, I actually have had a customer, um, actually a couple of customers now who've done porch pickup, who, um, you know, I have put a bag out onto the porch and they've come and, and, and picked it up. Um, and we've been able to do that. And they can do that, say, on a trip to go get groceries. Um, necessities, supplies, stitching supplies should be a, a necessity. It should be a, an essential item. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I mean, still, again, I'm very blessed to, to work from home. And so I've been able to continue working, you know, in my shop. I can make one trip a day to the post office. And that's what I've, that's what I've been doing, gloved and with a mask on. Um, you know, I, I head in there and, you know, yesterday I actually didn't even hand them my tub because it dawned on me that I'm handing them my tub and then they're handing it back to me. And so I'm like, oh great. So now I'm putting my tub down and I'm literally handing out each of those things, laying it on the counter and letting them pick it up. Um, from there just to try to keep from any more contamination coming into anything that would come into my home so um, And then we're really going through the gloves Luckily my husband had a couple of boxes of gloves that he kept in the garage for different things when he's changing oil and whatever And so we've pulled all those in so we had quite a few um, You know just just regular gloves and then my cat has asthma So I have to put medication into her ear and so I use gloves for that and the vet had given me gloves um, a whole box of gloves to use with her, um, her steroid uh, gel that goes into her ear for her asthma. Um, so we just kind of got lucky that we happened to have quite a few pairs of gloves. But anyway, sorry, I got off on a tangent. Um, but anyway, to keep this community, so watch for that where, that where there is life pattern. That will be um, coming. It's supposed to be shipping on their order. I placed my order yesterday. Again, should probably be here Monday. A um, couple things that I've refilled. Uh, the Teresa Kogut Samplers and Celebrate book that everybody went gaga for. Uh, those are back in stock. Um, so if you didn't get yours first time around, I have plenty of those. And also another one that has come out that everybody's been loving. Um, I made pretty healthy orders of these when I got, got them in last week. And they're, I think uh, spring might already be almost gone. And I've just reordered some of that. But these tear trays, everybody loves them. They started with what welcome or celebrate Christmas and celebrate Halloween. Now we got celebrate spring and celebrate Easter. Aren't these really cute? They really are nice. And even if you don't decorate with a, a tear tray, which I do not, 
I still appreciate all the little motifs that are in there. And you know, you could even, if you wanted to, just like take off this top little thing and do a little small. There's all different kinds of possibilities. So those have been very popular and I do have um, new supplies coming in on Monday. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about and show you and then I'm gonna let you roll is um, this sweet kit that we got at Market from Shepherd's Bush in your Easter bonnet. Can you see that? Oh, it's so cute. I love that little sheep with his little swirlies on him. And it is a complete kit, folks. Chart, linen, threads, beads, ribbon, satin ribbon, um, and backing material. There's actually backing material in here as well. Complete kit. So I think I only have four left. So make sure you, if you wanna get this, you hop on and, and, uh, and get what you want. Okay, um, I'm gonna be out of here. Stay safe. Stay healthy, practice your social distancing. But if you have to social distance, try doing a virtual stitching group. Um, even if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, just to spend that time sitting and stitching and chatting. And it, you can really tell that it's everybody, everybody loves it. We stayed on for over three hours the other night, which probably if we were just gonna go somewhere and do that, we would never do that. So it, it, it really is a, a, a bright light. Um, so stay healthy, stay well, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much.